Mm. First of all, let's start with the because there are many points that she is making there. But the last time she spoke on this and raised the issue of having introduced the free senior high school policy, the it, I guess you noted the bruaha that follows. But it seems she's still standing her grounds that we started free SHS. Is that the position of the prof? Thank you. Thank thank you very much. Um and uh, let me say good morning to your listeners. I'm not sure that this is about Professor Jane and Opokwajima standing her ground. This is about Prof stating what is a fact. A fact backed by proof, backed by evidence. I mean, there's, there's nothing to rebut the fact that free senior high school was started by the Mahama administration with Professor Jane Opokwajima as the Zen Minister for Education. And you realize from the statement that Prof makes the point that it was progressively free. It was started by the NDC, and the NDC did substantial investment in terms of infrastructure. That's where she references the point about community, the NDC's investment in the community senior day schools, which many people call the e-blocks. I mean, it was precisely because of the NDC commitment to progressively free education, in this case, free secondary education or free SHS, if you like, which informed the then government to make that substantial investment into the provision of community day schools. And that's why I am, I'm making the point that this was not about profit exactly standing her ground, even though I understand the context in which you, you you use that word. I think more accurately, she was just stating the obvious, she was stating the fact. There's nothing really contentious about it. I mean, it just has become like all of these um, anti-NDC propagandists who will willfully and deliberately say that they do not understand what 24-hour economic policy of John Mahama is, is that, that will, will, I mean, deliberate or willful um, decision on the part of those persons not to understand. That's what our political opponents do. So it's understandable when they do that. Because I, I'm sure you've also read um, a post made by Manasseh Aziri, who is also a journalist, who is of the opinion that there's no way the NDC can lay claim to freezing high school. I don't quite get that. Yes. I, I'm saying that, okay, so this is the post. This is Manasseh Azui. Uh, he is of the opinion that, it's, okay, he said in September 2015, I wrote an article titled The Lies About Mohammed's Free SHS Policy. And this paragraph from that article shows the deception that the government introduced ostensibly to undermine the Akufuado's Free SHS. And Quotes. The government says 12.2 million has been released to implement the program for the first time 2015-2016 academic year. The policy will benefit 320,488 students. This means that in term, in, in a term, each student will only benefit from 38 cities. 38 cities is how much each student will benefit from this policy. Ask the SHS students how much each student pays for PTA dues, not to talk about other fees. And continues. This is what the Mahama administration did, and nobody could call that free SHS. When Akufuado took office in 2017, it launched the free SHS in September of that year. It was the first time secondary education in Ghana was truly free in recent history. I have enormous uh, respect for Manas and, and, and his journalism, but it does not also mean that he's not entitled to his opinion or he may not get his wrong at times. It's a statement of fact that free compulsory senior high school was launched by President Mahama with Professor Jane Opok Wajman as the Minister for Education. It's a statement of fact that substantial investment was made in this endeavor by way of investment in the community senior day high schools. Uh, a number of them which were completed with, um, I mean, modern state modern modern laboratories and teaching and learning materials of course quite a number of them have been left to rot in the bush by this administration it's a statement of fact that 
many students as part of that also benefited, for example, from the sanitary part provision elsewhere. Some of them got bicycles, uh, backpacks, shoes, and all of all of these things. They were all part of the NDC's commitment to the provision of free compulsory, of, of free, free, free uh, ethical education. You know, so there's, there's no doubt about that. There's nothing contentious. If there's anything contentious, it's about whether it was progressively, progressively free or not. And the NDC has not hidden the fact that it was rolling out free education in secondary schools as progressively free. But a key point then is about what will happen to the policy moving forward. When former President John Dramani Again, Mahama. there's nothing. Again, there's nothing contentious about. Mm-hmm. There's, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing for the people of Ghana to be scared about. I remember uh, President Mahama in 2020 election, precisely in Cape Coast North, making an emphatic statement that the next NDC administration will improve the implementation of free SSS consistently throughout the Building Ghana tour and this electioneering period, both President Mahama and Professor Jaina Nopukwajiman Blackberry and running mates on the NDC ticket respectively have repeatedly made a point about the NDC will improve the implementation of free education. So again, there's, there's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing contentious. But you need you you can understand our political opponents. I don't know if I should call them detractors or anti anti Mahama anti NDC propagandists who think that that is the only message they have, and they need to create a sense that there's something uncertain about it. If the NDC should come to power. That is not true. It has been debunked by both the flag bearer, President Mahama, and the running the Professor Jaman Naupoku Ajiman. And that is clearly evident. And I think that there's a voice uh, clip to it where Professor Jane Opoku Ajiman makes the point that the implementation of free SHS is something that will continue earnestly under the next NDC administration. In fact, he makes the point that there will be more investment in the area to improve um, the present conditions, to do away with the congestion that is facing students in the classrooms and in the dormitories and, and elimination. So it prioritizes, for example, investment in classroom and boarding infrastructure, just so that the government can do away with a double track system that makes some students come and stay home for as long as three months sometimes and then go back to school for a month and a half or two. Well, uh, uh, before I let you go, one other issue, in fact, the most important uh, for her has been the Women's Development Bank. Why is that so germane to the prof? <laughs> I think I think it's become like um, a pet a pet, um, a pet message of Professor Jaina or Professor Jaina. And it's understandable. She's a woman, she goes to the market, she, she's a mother, she knows what it feels like to attend to family. Again, she's also somebody who has nurtured and grown a lot of young men and women, many of whom still are in touch with her, you know, and she's a provider in many respects to many people who around her and look up to her so she knows what women go through um, substantially the establishment of the women's development bank is to make sure that women are financially empowered and more independent so she she, she, she makes the point that it is fine it's fine when men do well when men do well they support they are, they are women, they support their families. But it is even better if both men and women were doing well and everybody was coming to the table with something. And she again makes the point that when women do well, it's not just for their families, it's not just for their communities, but they do so for the entirety of societies. And you know that women also do 
do a lot. I mean, in terms of children's education, providing for themselves, keeping businesses going. And it's in that respect that both President Mahama and Professor Jane Mukoku Ajeman and our party, the NDC, have made a commitment to establish a women's development bank. And primarily its objective is to ensure that women in business, and I use business loosely to mean women in all sorts of endeavor. It could be market women, traders, bakers, um, food vendors, those in corporate women, can access, can access loans on uh, very flexible terms and then they can do well because they would then not be subjected to all the, all the rigors of traditional banks in terms of what they require before they are able to help you and then also some flexibility in in terms of the repayments and all the other things that, that come about. Mainly, when you go to a bank right now, they will be asking for some form of collateral, many of which, for example, um, somebody who is dealing in very small business, like a hawker or somebody may not necessarily be able to provide. They don't even have the capacity to go to the traditional banks in the first place. But you want all of these people to do well, to be financially strong and independent. And that's the thing behind that. And Prop, anytime she's gone to the market, she acknowledges that Ghanaian women are hardworking and that if they were to get support, they do well. She also talks about the challenges that many of these women go through. Sometimes it has to be set up or funded either by their brothers, their spouses, their extended family. But it's not all the time that you can keep going to the same place for support because business is business and it must be run as such. This is the whole idea behind the proposal to establish a women's development bank so that people like Nancy, who I know are not just broadcasters, but they are also into food processing and all the other business. Sometimes when they think that they need to do some capital injection, we will not have to bother people like you, Senna, and Eric, and the friends that he had. But then there's a designated place where things are flexible, she can access soft loans and be able to expand her business. Great. Of course, we are monitoring the campaign, and thank you very much for speaking to us. I'm always grateful. Mm. Thank you. James Ajinim Boatin, spokesperson, Professor uh, Nana Jane Opoko Ajiman's campaign, joining us on the line. And speaking to the matter of...